Good afternoon. I hope everybody's well today. Uh, today we are going to continue in our book, Dear Pope Francis, um, Pope Francis answering letters of children from all around the world. So today uh, our first letter is from Alejandra. She is nine years old and she is from Peru. And there's her picture and the picture she drew. And her question is, Dear Pope Francis, if God loves us so much and didn't want us to suffer, why didn't he defeat the devil? Good question. Lots of people ask that question. Dear Alejandra, God has defeated the devil and he did it on the cross. He defeated the devil, but in his own way. The devil is a loser and has been defeated. Do you know how dragons are? They have a very long tail and even if they have been killed, they continue to shake that tail for a while. What happened to the devil is like what happens to big and scary dragons that are defeated and killed. Their long tail moves and can still cause damage. In a small way, you can see it with little lizards when they lose their tails. Even though the tail is detached from the body, it continues to shake. Jesus' death defeated death. The devil is a loser. Don't forget it. He is like a dragon or a dangerous dinosaur that wags its tail for a while, even if it's already dead. Or here's another image. The devil is like a dog that is tied up and barks and growls. But if you don't get too close to him, he can't bite you. Pope Francis. Uh, the book of Revelation too is the story of good defeating evil. And um, there are some wild images in there too about how God defeats evil. Our next letter comes from Judith, who is nine years old and she is from Belgium. And there is her picture and the one she drew. Dear Pope Francis, what makes you happy in your work as Pope? Good question. What makes you happy in your work? Dear Judith, it makes me happy to be with people. That is what makes me happy. If I cannot be with people, I spend time with Jesus and talk to him about people. I can't imagine myself alone. Judith, I like your drawing. I think of myself as you have drawn me, hand in hand with you and your friends. Being together with others brings me joy. And as the Pope, I think I ought to be with people. Pope Francis. Indeed. Unfortunately, we're in the midst of a time when we can't always be with people. But I'm thankful for technology, for videos, for FaceTime, for Zoom, for GoToMeeting, for all those things that enable us to at least see each other uh, during this time. And um, we are a community of faith. Uh, we cannot be a person of faith alone. We must support our community and let them support us. The next letter comes from Juan Pablo, who's 10 years old, and he's from Argentina, and he's in this picture with his sister, Carolina. And Juan Pablo writes, Dear Pope Francis, why did Jesus choose those 12 apostles and not others? Great question, dear Juan Pablo. Why does Jesus choose this person or that one? Look, Jesus doesn't choose a crowd. He chooses each person one by one. So he chose the first 12 as his apostles. But we, you and I, are also chosen with a first name and a family name. I have been chosen as Jorge Mario and you as Juan Pablo. 
We have been chosen to be Jesus' friends and to do something in life. We are all chosen by the love of Jesus, but each of us is chosen in a personal way. We are not all chosen in a single common way. Jesus' love makes us feel chosen, but if you feel shut out of this love, then you have to face up to it and ask yourself why you feel that way. Jesus never excludes anyone from his heart. The red heart you drew is beautiful. Jesus does choose us. And as the Psalms say, he weaves us in the womb of our mother and chooses us before we are even born. One more letter. This one is from Alexandra, who is 10 years old from the Philippines. Dear Pope Francis, I hope you read my letter. I wanted to see you ever since I heard about you. Pope Francis, do you know why some parents argue with each other? Dear Alexandra, we all argue. We are all human. Even I have argued. Our life together always has its problems. You shouldn't be surprised by this. It's normal. I like one thing and you like something else. At times, we find ourselves in disagreement. Even you, I am sure, argue once in a while with your friends. But life goes on, and we move forward. We overcome difficulties together. It's normal for people to argue, and so your parents argue too. But there is a sort of magic formula to solve these disagreements. Did you know that? Parents must try never to end the day without making peace. If you carry anger and sadness inside of you at night, you will get up in the morning with a cold heart that won't easily warm up. In your drawing, there's you and there's me. We're smiling. There's a rainbow that comes out from the clouds and so does the sun. This is peace. If you want to help your parents, I advise you most of all, not to talk badly about your dad to your mom and not to talk badly about your mom to your dad. Stay close to your mom and dad and speak well of them. That will be good for everyone. Pope Francis. Thank you for joining me today. And next week on Tuesday, we will continue hearing letters from children to Pope Francis. I wish you well today and all of God's blessings.